right. You know what time it is. Live from the Bear Muscle Garage, it's time for the season premiere of Fit Crew. What do we got in store for you today? Let's go ahead and share this on screen. So for today's Never Miss Monday workout, we are starting off this season with a nice 15-minute simple sweat. But as we know, simple does not mean easy. We're going to be doing 15 minutes, as many rounds as possible, of 20 hand-to-hand -hand swings, 15 sit-ups, and 10 goblet squats. And we may be thinking, hey, I don't have some of this stuff. 15 minutes seems kind of long. Don't worry, guys. As always, we're going to warm up really well. And we're going to go through all the options that will allow you to do this workout or your version of it right where you are, using what you have and doing what you can. But let's go ahead and start this general warm up. Here we go, guys. Let's get some arm circles going back, arm circles back. And as you know, my name is Coach Chris. I am a level three CrossFit trainer which means I've logged thousands of hours over many years, helping many people just like you live their best life through health and fitness. And let's switch to arm circles forward. And let's get to know our fit crew a little bit better. How has this program helped you to live your best life? How long have you been doing this program? And what benefits have you felt? Let's move on to arms across the chest. Hug yourself, love yourself. And let's hear first from Twin One. Go ahead and say your name, where you're from. How long have you been doing this craziness? And how has it helped you? Hi, I'm Denise. I'm in New York. I've been doing this program since April 2020. So it definitely has helped me to stay consistent with my fitness. Uh, this is the only program that I've ever stuck with. And I love the results and I'm continuing to grow from it. It's not a, a stagnant program. It's you keep growing and growing. And it's been awesome to see your growth. So thank you so much, Twin One. Let's go ahead and move on to the wrist wave. And while we're doing the wrist wave, let's hear from Bubbles. Go ahead, Bubbles, say your name, where you're from. How long have you been doing this program and how has it helped you? Hi, I'm Bubbles on the Kia. Um, I am in New York, and I've been doing this program just shy of four years, June 2020. And um, it has helped me in every area I could think of. I've gained so much more confidence to try new things because of some weight loss and just because of getting stronger and just men more mental fitness or toughness that I've gained throughout the years. But um, this this program um, has definitely like just improved so many things on so many levels, mentally, physically, emotionally, and helped me act definitely manage stress. So it's been an awesome program. Thank you. And working that mind muscle has been clear to see. So thank you so much, Buzzle, Bubbles, for everything you contribute to our Fit Crew family. Let's go ahead and move on to some high knees. High knees into chest, or if it works better, we could do some high elbows like this. And while we're doing this, let's hear from Mighty Mouse. Go ahead and say your name, where you're from. How long have you been doing this program and how has it helped you? Hi, my name is Renice Young from Georgia. Uh, I've been doing this program since April of 2020. Um, since I started, I've seen a big improvement. Um, never thought that I would get to the point where I can be standing and doing push-ups from a dresser. So this program is very awesome. It's helped me improve my mobility and it continues to help me to um, do better. So this is an awesome program. And you are an awesome part of our family. So thank you so much, Mighty Mouse, for letting us to accompany you on your journey and seeing your great results. Let's go ahead and move on to some calf raises. Up on the toe, back on the heel. Up on the toe, back on the heel. Or if it works better, we could do some wrist extensions like this. And while we're doing this, let's hear from Bird Dog. Go ahead, say your name, where you're from. How long have you been doing this program and how has it helped you? Hey, I'm Robin, aka Bird Dog. I am from Texas. I've been doing this program since March of 2022. And one major uh, improvement I've seen is in my cholesterol scores overall went drastically down and I could not do that with just diet alone. So huge benefit. Awesome. So happy to hear 
that's very important improvement that you made in your life. And I'm sure everyone around you appreciates the extra health and fitness that you now bring to the table. So thank you so much, Bird Dog. Let's go ahead and move on to some jumping jacks, or we could do some stepping jacks if we want low impact. And so some of you may be wondering, hey, I've been doing this program for a while. I've been seeing some results. It's making me better, making me happier. How do I support this? Well, the best way is always going to be follow the program. Invite others to follow the program with you. Be consistent with it. And what helps us to be even more consistent is when we decide to get on track. And when you get on track, you get access to the full program. Six workouts a week, additional opportunities to get closer to our Fit Crew family, and some other special events as well. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, please click the link that's in this video or feel free to message me directly for details. Let's go ahead and take a break from this warm up, guys. And we're going to move on to the activation phase, which is where we're going to do a couple different movements that are going to help us to get specifically ready for today's workout. So the first thing we're going to do is the pigeon. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate the pigeon for us. And if we're doing this from the seated position, then that pigeon is going to look like this. So let's everyone join in here and let's sink into the pigeon on this side. So a couple things to keep in mind. We are laying face down. We've got the one leg up and across the chest, other leg back, and we are sinking into this pose here, which opens up the hips and helps us to improve our squat position. And let's go ahead and switch sides here. So we're gonna get the other leg up and across the chest, other leg back. And this pigeon is one of the most important activations that we do. It activates the glutes, relieves issues that might be going on with the IT band. And as previously mentioned, it helps us to improve our squat positioning. In the squats, we always talk about chest up, shoulders back, knees out to the side. And that is exactly the positioning that we are working on here. And so good job on this pigeon. Next, we're going to roll over and do some glute bridges. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two glute bridges for us. And if we are doing this from the seated position, then those glute bridges are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 glute bridges together. So a couple things to keep in mind. We are laying on our back. We are pulling those feet in super close to the hips, squeezing those glutes, getting the hips higher and higher each rep. And we want to think fast up, hold the top, slow on the way back down. And so good job here on these glute bridges. Next, we're going to do some single leg raises. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two reps on the same leg for us. And if we are doing this from the seated position, then we're going to do some single arm raises like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 single leg raises, five straight through on each side. So a couple of things to keep in mind, we're going to point those toes and we're going to get that leg all the way up at least 90 degrees if we can. And then super slow on the way back down to really feel that core engagement. And similarly, that's also why we're doing all five reps on one side before switching and then doing five on the other side. And so good job here on these single leg raises. Next, we're going to do some air squats. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two air squats for us.
And if we are doing this from the seated position, then the air squats are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 air squats together. Now it could be that squatting all the way down hips below the knees is a challenge for us for a number of different reasons. In which case we could do some assisted squats just like we see Deb doing here. We can sit and stand to a chair or to a footstool or we can use progressively lower targets until eventually we can squat all the way down hips below the knees. And in the squat, we wanna start with the feet shoulder width apart. And we initiate by sending those hips back and down, pushing the knees out to the side until we get all the way down hips below the knees and keeping those heels on the ground, of course. And then we're driving through the feet until we get to a fully standing locked out position up top. And so good job here on these air squats. Next, we're gonna do some good mornings. Let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two good mornings for us. And if we're doing this from the seated position, then the good mornings are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in here and let's do 10 good mornings together. So a couple things to keep in mind, we're gonna fold those arms across the chest and then we are going to hinge by sending those hips back, getting that chest to just about parallel before squeezing the glutes and getting back up. And we also wanna have those feet close together underneath the hips. So we don't want those feet too wide. We wanna really fire up the glutes and the hamstrings, the posterior chain. And so having those feet closer together will achieve that even better. And so good job here on these good mornings. Next, what I'd like you to do is to grab a light kettlebell if you have one. And by light, I mean 10 pounds or less. And that's either that's four or five kilos or less. Now, if we don't have a light kettlebell, then anything else light will do. Preferably something with a handle today. So it could be an empty laundry detergent jug, an empty water jug, an empty orange juice jug, an empty purse. But if we don't have anything with a handle, it could be any other light common household item. It could be a shoe, a pillow, a teddy bear. It could be a light dumbbell if we have it. So with this light object in hand, we're gonna do some sumo deadlifts and let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two sumo deadlifts for us. And if we're doing this from the seated position, then those sumo deadlifts are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 sumo deadlifts together. So for the sumo deadlift, that object is gonna start on the ground in between the feet. And even though the name says sumo, for today, we actually don't want those feet super wide. We just want them just wide enough to fit between the feet. That's about as wide as we want it. But at the start of the lift, those hips are gonna be super low, chest is up, shoulders back, and we are looking straight ahead and then we're going to take a deep breath in to brace that core as we drive the ground away, getting to a fully standing locked out position up top, shoulders back at the top. And then we are tapping the ground in between the feet at the bottom each rep. And we want to make sure that we bend those knees enough to get those hips super low there. We want the legs doing more of the work, not the back. And so let's make sure we get those hips super low each time. And so good job here on these sumo deadlifts. And finally, we are going to do some Russian swings. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate three Russian swings for us.
And if we are doing this from the seated position, then those Russian swings are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 reps of the Russian swing together. So a couple things to keep in mind. At the start of the Russian swing, we are getting that object back between the legs and we are squeezing those glutes, jumping it up to about eye level and then bringing it back down. So notice it's the hips and the legs doing most of the work, not the arms pulling it up. So we wanna think back then up, not down then up. We're getting that object back, squeezing those glutes, getting it to about face level there. And so good job here on these Russian swings. Well, that is it for the activation phase. Now we're gonna move on to the movement prep which is where we're gonna practice specifically the three moves that we're doing in today's workout. The first move that we're doing is hand-to-hand -hand kettlebell swings. And let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate four reps of the hand-to-hand -hand swing for us. And if we are doing this from the seated position, then those hand-to-hand -hand swings are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 reps of the hand-to-hand -hand swing together. So notice, just like that Russian swing, the rep starts by getting that object back between the legs and we're using the power of the glutes to get it up to face level. And we're switching at the top, not at the bottom. So we are jumping it up, switching at the top, jumping it up, switching at the top. Now this could take some practice. You know, sometimes we get a little bit lost and it's like, where am I switching at the top? Or, you know, what's going on? And we find ourselves switching all over the place. If it's easier, then we can just do some one arm swings. Let's have twin one demonstrate a couple reps here, five swings on just one arm. And at the same height as that Russian swing. So we're getting it back between the legs, jumping it up to eye level. And if this is a lot easier for us to process, then we could just do sets of five one-arm swings at a time. But otherwise, let's definitely hit these hand-to-hand -hand swings, switching at the top, not at the bottom. And so good job here on these hand-to-hand -hand swings. And we're getting that coordination down, a little bit of practice, and we'll clean it up. The second move that we're doing in today's workout is sit-ups. Specifically, we're doing butterfly style sit-ups. And if you happen to have something like an ab mat that you wanna use at the base of your spine uh, for extra support, that's completely fine as well. But let's go ahead and have twin one demonstrate two reps of the butterfly sit-up for us. And if we are doing this from the seated position, then those sit-ups are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in and let's do 10 sit-ups together. Now the sit-up could be a very challenging core movement for many of us, in which case we can continue to do some of those single leg raises that we were doing in the warm-up. Let's go ahead and have twin one, demonstrate a couple reps here just to remind us what those single leg raises look like. So that's gonna be all the way up, all the way down. And we're gonna do 15 of these each round. And we can either switch every five reps or do all uh, rep, 15 reps on the same leg per round and just switch legs per round. But if we're doing these butterfly sit-ups as prescribed, we've got the feet together, knees out to the side, and we are starting with those shoulder blades on the ground swinging those arms for momentum, touching the toes or the ground in front of us at the top. Most importantly, we're getting the shoulders in front of the hips at the top. That's the range of motion that we're looking for on these sit-ups here. And so good job 
on these sit-ups. The third move that we're doing in today's workout is goblet squats. So let's go ahead and grab that light object that we were just warming up with. And let's look on as twin one demonstrates two goblet squats for us. And if we are doing this from the seated position today, then the goblet squats are going to look like this. So let's everyone join in here and let's do 10 goblet squats together. So just like in the warm up, if we were squatting with assistance earlier, sitting and standing to a chair or a footstool or a medicine ball, we can continue to do that here as well. And we can choose to do this with or without weight, but we definitely want to work on our full range of motion. And so if we decide to add a little bit of weight, we also possibly want to consider, hey, is it possible for me to get a little bit more range of motion, maybe getting a lower target? And that's another way to progress with this movement. But otherwise, what we want to think about is what we talked about in the warm up. If we're doing this as prescribed, we've got the feet shoulder width apart, setting the hips back and down. And let's get another inch there, V. We want to get those hips clearly below the knees at the bottom, pushing those knees out to the side, getting that hip crease below the knee, driving through the heels until we get to a fully standing position, just like we see twin one doing here, getting all the way back up, full extension at the top, and much better V, getting a lot lower on those squats. And so good job here on these goblet squats. Well, now it's ramp up time. If you've been doing this program long enough to earn some badges and you'd like to start adding some weight to do either the scaled intermediate or RX weight in today's workout, then let's start to gradually add some weight, doing about six to 10 practice reps of each movement at a time, both the hand-to-hand -hand swings and the goblet squats until we get to the weight that we wanna use for our division. And we have a couple minutes here to work up to that weight gradually. We don't have to go straight to a heavy weight. But if we have not been earning badges or we're just getting back into this after a long time off, then please, let's not add any weight. That super light weight that we were just using in the warmup is going to be more than enough for us today. Seriously. It's very important that we have the right form and consistency with all our habits as evidenced by earning those badges before we've earned the right to add or reintroduce intensity, such as by adding weight or going fast. And whether we're adding weight or not, let's pay close attention to the following checklist. Number one. Please make sure your device is fully charged or plugged in so we can get through this whole workout without losing you. Number two, let's grab some water. Let's take a sip. Let's make sure we got our water nearby so we could take a sip as needed all throughout the workout. Number three, I'm gonna give everyone a three, two, one, go countdown. And that's how you can synchronize your timer with mine if you choose to use one. Number four, music. Super important. We all have different tastes in music. I can guarantee you enjoy your taste in music better than mine. And the great thing is you can blast your music as loud as you want, as long as you can still hear me helping you throughout the workout. So let's get that playlist queued up right now. And lastly, how are we keeping track of these rounds? This is a 15 minute workout. Those rounds are gonna be flying. We're gonna be moving really fast. It's easy to lose track of where we are, who we are, what we're doing. So let's have some type of system in place 
to help us keep track of how much work we're getting done. Something that helps with that is having the workout written down close by. So if you're a teacher's pet like Mighty Mouse who wins the award first to the screen, Deb, very close second place winning the dancing award. And we've got Bubbles as well with the scorecard award today. Nice big scorecard. We've got Bird Dog ready with the whiteboard. We've got V as well with the handwriting award today. And then of course, we've got Twin One. Let's go ahead and take a teacher's pet picture just to show how prepared you are. Teacher's pet picture in three, two, one. Awesome. I'm going to bring the workout back on screen one more time here, and then we'll get going. So in just about a minute, we're going to start this timer, and we're about to do this season premiere Never Miss Monday workout, which is a 15-minute MRAP, as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes of 20 hand-to-hand -hand swings, 15 sit-ups, and 10 goblet squats. Let's remember on those hand-to-hand -hand swings, we are switching at the top. If it starts to get kind of crazy, or if we know that's just not a good move for us from the start, maybe we could just do sets of five one-arm swings at a time until we've done 20 total swings. On those sit-ups, let's make sure we're getting the shoulders in front of the hips at the top, shoulder blades on the ground at the bottom. If the sit-up is a super challenging movement, we can do those single leg raises instead, 15 reps each round. And then the goblet squats. Let's make sure we're using assistance as needed. Otherwise, let's make sure we're getting those hips below the knees each and every time. If that's a challenge for us, then we might want to consider getting some type of target for assistance, even if it's something as low as a medicine ball or a footstool. But let's make sure we're getting as low as we can each time, keeping those heels on the ground. So your score is going to be the amount of rounds you get done in these 15 minutes of the 20 hand-to-hand -hand swings, 15 sit-ups, and the 10 goblet squats. So if you are good to go, give me a thumbs up over here. I'm going to get our clock going, and then I will highlight twin one to get us started. So 15 minutes. 20 hand-to-hand -hand swings, 15 sit-ups, 10 goblet squats. How many rounds are we going to get? Let's find out. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, go. And we are off on these hand-to-hand -hand swings. Getting it back, then up, back, then up. Using the power of the glutes and the legs, switching at the top. Good work here, guys. Getting it to just about eye level, chest level, nothing higher than that. But we are switching these out. Getting these hand-to-hand -hand swings, getting it up, switching hands. But nice work here. After the 20 swings, we are moving on to some sit-ups. We got bubbles going right into it, getting those shoulders in front of the hips. That's what we want to see, full range of motion each time. And so it might not be enough to just touch our toes. Some of us have super long arms. So touching our toes or touching the ground, that's a tool to help us but let's make sure that we're getting the shoulders in front of the hips each and every time. And let's remember that the single leg raise is always an option for us as well as needed. And after these sit-ups, we're gonna be moving on to these goblet squats. So we're holding this object at the upper part of the chest, getting super low, nice low squats there, V all the way down, keeping the heels on the ground pushing to full extension at the top, getting those shoulders back at the top. So not just all the way down, but all the way up. Great work, getting low, getting high, full range of motion. 
So everyone pretty much closing out this first round here. And everyone is on track to finish within today's target window. And these target windows are the best guide to help us to measure our progress and to challenge ourselves appropriately. When we first start out in this program, we're not using heavy weights. We're using maybe the scaled weights or we're using the flex weights and options. But then as we start earning badges, we can start to use the scaled weights and options. And as we're able to finish within the target window with the scaled weights and options, we can move on to the intermediate weights and options. And as we're able to finish within the target window with those, we can move on to the RX weights and options. And everyone's journey to RX is different. It could take weeks, it could take months, it could take years. And honestly, it also depends on the workout itself. Some workouts play more to our strengths. But as long as we continually use the target windows as a guide, we're earning badges and picking the weights and options to help us to finish within that window, that's how we're going to get the intended stimulus of the workout and continue to progress. And so we are deep into round two here, most of us either finishing off these sit-ups or perhaps even on these squats. We are getting through this here. And it's amazing how through the power of technology, even if we're alone, we are not alone. We are all together. We are with each other. Sweating through this, working through this together. And so let's keep breathing. Let's keep moving. Switching at about no higher than eye level. That's what we're looking for. Working on that switch. Getting through this. And let's definitely pay attention to our breathing as it relates to the squats. We're looking to hit most of these squats in unbroken sets of 10. And a lot of times it's the breathing that'll help us do that. So we wanna take a nice deep breath in on the way down, out on the top, in on the way down, out at the top. And that's what's gonna help us to get a good oxygen flow, but then brace in the right part of the movement. But nice work here, good pace, working through these sit-ups, working through these swings, working through these squats, doing what we gotta do. And let's remember our feet positioning and our hand positioning makes a difference in our performance. So good fix there, Bubbles. We want the feet to be only wide enough to get that object back there, not an inch wider. And that's what's going to give us more power. And on these squats, we are getting super low, pushing those knees out to the side. Full range of motion. Good breathing and bracing. On the sit-ups as well, the breathing and bracing makes a big difference. We breathe in on our back. Breathe out at the top. Breathe in on our back. Breathe out at the top. We are hitting big sets of these squats. Hopefully, mostly unbroken sets of the swings too, but if we have to break that big set of 20 up into like 12 and 8 or something along those lines, that's completely fine as well. We are making our way through this 15 minute sweat here. Those who've been doing this program for a while know that we have lots of different style workouts. We've got longer ones, we've got shorter ones, we've got heavier ones, we've got lighter ones, and they all 
help us to prepare for life's different demands and to be ready for whatever life throws our way. So today is definitely not a short one, but a nice steady state medium length one to kick off this season. Hopefully we're hitting mostly unbroken sets on these swings using a nice manageable weight, using the power of the legs and the glutes. We are on this guys. And let's bring those feet closer together there bird dog. There we go. That's going to give us more power on the way up. It's easy as we get tired to kind of default to certain positions. But we want to remember that good form and good positioning is a more efficient use of energy, especially as we get tired. Super important to use the right form. We're switching at the top on these swings, getting super low on these squats. And something else that helps with our squat positioning is the flexi time routine. In our crew, we always say flexi time first, flexi time often. Flexi time is the foundation of this program. And in a word, flexi time helps us to get better squats. And so the more regularly we participate in the flexi time, the more comfortable range of motion we'll get, helping us to really push in workouts like today's. We are deep into this, guys. Nine minutes in, just about six to go. Let's keep the chest up on these swings. We're not letting that weight take us down. We're keeping the chest up, shoulders back doing what we gotta do. Getting that bell back, using the power of the glutes to power it up. Keeping those feet just wide enough, not an inch wider. All we need is just space to get it back. But the closer it is, the more power we get on the way up. And similarly on the squats, sure we do want the feet slightly wider for stability, but even there, we only want the feet as wide as they need to be so that we can get the hips all the way down. Any wider than that, then we lose power. And so for instance, bird dog, let's experiment. Let's bring those feet in just a hair. See if those squats, you have more power on the way up. As long as we're able to get as low as we need to, boom, we're getting low. And you're feeling that torque, that power on the way up. And that's how this goes. We get coaching, we get cueing, and we get better as we apply these cues. Good depth of it there, V, getting super low. Standing that up, shoulders back at the top. And it's easy on these sit-ups to kind of lose our pace. But on the sit-ups, we want to push through those sit-ups. As long as we're breathing deep, then that's what's going to help us to keep pushing at a good pace. Breathe on the back, swing those arms. Swing one, getting low, standing that up. Got bird dog on these hand-to-hand -hand swings. Awesome work here. Let's remember to keep the chest up, shoulders back, especially at the bottom of the swing there. And nothing to it but to do it, guys. We are popping that weight up, switching at the top. Much better feet positioning bubbles. Mighty Mouse, fighting through. We always keeping you on your toes with some new movements, doing the hand-to-hand -hand swings a little bit different today, but you're adapting well to the challenge.
And just like that, we are at the three minute warning. So those who've been doing this program for a while, we understand the power of pacing. The longer the workout, the shorter we, the slower we start so that we can hold on to a steady pace and even go faster toward the end. And now is the time to start thinking about doing that. We've been holding on to a nice steady pace, not coming out too fast. We also don't want to come out too slow. But here is where we kick it in gear and see if we can push just a little faster and hold on to that pace just a little longer to really maximize our score. So we are getting down, we are getting up, we're breathing through these reps. Getting low, pushing those shoulders back at the top. Squeezing the glutes. And something to think about is we actually, we want to get to full extension, but not hyper extension. So on the next round V, uh, when you get to the top there, let's think shoulders back, but not back back. And so let's get to full extension, um, straightening everything out without that lean that we're seeing. But we got just about one more minute here. This is where we go all out. Every single rep counts. We are pushing hard. Keep in good form, as always. But seeing how many rounds we can get, or even if we start that next one, how deep we can get into that next round. Less than a minute left. And we are pushing these sit-ups all the way back, all the way up on these swings, using the power of the glutes. On these squats, still getting low. Just about 20 more seconds here, guys. Let's push, let's go, let's do this. Ten more seconds. One more rep, one more rep, one more rep. Three, two, one, and time. And as always, we want to start the season off with a nice victory dance, right? Bubbles is all about the victory dance. Let's see that victory dance, Bubbles, Mighty Mouse is about the victory dance. We know Deb is getting up for that victory dance. And Bird Dog is super happy to be done with this one. V is on that victory dance. And let's get Twin One on that victory dance as well. Well, awesome work on this season premiere, guys, but we're not done yet. We're about to move on to the cool down stretch, which is one of the most important parts of the program. This stretch helps us to fight soreness, increase flexibility, so we can come back day after day, staying consistent and committed. So the first stretch that we're gonna do today is the seal stretch. And this is gonna be where we're laying face down and we're going to push up like this, letting those hips sink into the ground. And if that's a bit hard, hey, we can do this off the elbows like this. And if we're doing this from the seated position, then we're gonna get those arms up and pull back like this. And while we're doing this, let's reflect on the workout. Let's do some high, low buffalo. So, hi. What is one thing you feel you did well in the workout today? Low. 
What is something you want to do better the next time it shows up? And Buffalo, what is something that surprised you about the workout today? While we're thinking about that, let's switch here. We're going to go from the seal into the frog. We're going to get those hips back, knees out to the side, and we're going to sink it into this, opening up those hips. And while we're in the frog here, let's hear from twin one. And if we're doing this from the seated position, we're going to get those hands down to the shoulder blades and pull back like this. But what is your high-low buffalo twin one? My high was the sit-up. The low was the hand-to-hand -hand swing. They started getting heavy on me towards the end. I had to like really tighten the core and use the glutes on that. Um, the buffalo was, um, I got one more round than I thought I was going to get. So I'm happy that I pushed through that. Awesome. Don't you love it when you're going in expecting a certain thing, but you stick to a game plan, you stick to a nice smart rep scheme, and you surprise yourself with an even better performance. So good job there, twin one. And let's move on to your supine twist. We're gonna get one knee into the chest and we're gonna twist the other way, pulling down with that opposite hand. And while we're on this side, let's hear from Bird Dog. And if we're doing this from the seated position, then we're going to twist toward the right, holding on to whatever we need to. But what is your high low buffalo, Bird Dog? Oh, my high is also the sit ups. That was like a little rest period. Low was the squat. My crickety knee was yelling at me a little bit. Um, and on Buffalo was, I was really surprised how uh, difficult this workout was. Um, like you said, said earlier, simple is not always easy. So that was true in today's workout. But I'm glad that you were able to push within your abilities and maximize your performance in today's workout. So good job, Bird Dog. And let's go ahead and hit the supine twist on the other side. So we got the other knee into the chest and then we are twisting, pulling down with that opposite hand like this. And while we're on this side, let's hear from V. And if we're doing this from the seated position, we're now going to twist toward the left, holding on to whatever we need to. But what is your high-low buffalo V? Okay, my high would, would be the... Um the swing. Um, my low will stay, I'll stay the squat. And then um, my buffalo, I'll say, I'm, I'm glad um, that I chose to challenge myself on the weight. I was like, ah. <laughs> but I'm glad I did. You're always glad you do when you feel like you definitely uh, are ready for that, that weight. And I'm glad you did it as well, especially, most importantly, that you were able to keep the proper range of motion and the form that we were talking about. So good job there, V. Well, that's our wad, that's our stretch, that's our high-low buffalo. Let's go ahead and kick this season off with the very first Never Miss Monday sweaty selfie. Because does this count if we don't take this selfie? Let's flex on the camera here, guys. And let's take this selfie. Sweaty selfie in three, two, one. And crazy face. And let's go ahead and put the fists in the middle for the cheer. So on three, two claps, fit crew. And here we go. One, two, three. Fit crew. Fit crew. Fit crew. Fit crew. Fit crew. So. Thank you very much. And if you enjoy this program, then please give this channel a subscribe, a like, and a share. Thank you very much and see you next time.